Okay guys, so this is the beginning of Great Smoker Build. The saga continues, part eight. My name's Chuck, Chuck Newt, and I'm glad you're here with me. And uh, you look right behind me here, and you can see I've got a big piece of aluminum sheeting. And I'm getting ready to do some work with this. Now this is the one that will actually go on the back, um, directly behind the smoker, as you're facing the trailer. Um, so, let me uh, give you a shot of it real good. And uh, we'll, uh, I'll show you where we're going with it. Okay, so this is like 99 and a half by four foot wide. And this will cover the the whole bottom side of the back of the uh, framing that I just built. And uh, so my next mission here is to get out some soap and water and give it a good scrubbing, let it dry, uh, prepping it for paint. And uh, I'll show you where we're going with that. Alright guys, I've got some uh, just regular dish soap and water. Scrub it down. Now I'm actually going to use a piece of steel wool here simply because if I actually scratch it a little bit, it's going to help the uh, paint adhere to the aluminum. You gotta love it when you get a kink in your no kink hose. You guys may not be able to see it very well at all, but I can see it. Uh, where the scouring pad here left some mark there. Now we're not looking for any deep scratches or gouges or anything like that. Um, if it's something to, you know, help the, help the paint to have something to hold on to. It's something the paint will fit on, you'll never know it's there. Now I'm going to go get one of these, uh, like, super absorbent cloths and see if I can't dry as most, much of that off there as I can. Speed the drying process. Okay, so the first thing I did was tip it up and try to get as much of it to come off of the water to come off there as I could. Now I got a couple of these super absorbent towels. That's side one. I'm going to go ahead and let this dry. And while you're, while we're doing that, I'm going to take this, uh, video camera over here and educate you on the paint that I'm getting ready to primer this with. Okay guys, I went out this morning and I bought some what they call self-etching primer. Now I am. Uh, this says it etches and primes in one easy step. I did some research uh, looking at how you go to paint aluminum because I had no clue um, and they tell you that you online they tell you that you need this stuff called self-etching primer. And um, so, self-etching primer. I'm gonna come around here and sit down. Okay, so I've got myself a refreshment here and a can of paint. Now, it's a rattle can. And there you go. So, it says, use outdoors in a well-ventilated area such as an open garage. Use when temper temperature is above 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius and the humidity is below 65% to ensure proper drying. Do not apply to surfaces that exceed 200 degrees Fahrenheit or 93 degrees Celsius. Avoid spraying in very windy, dusty conditions. Cover surrounding areas, protect from spray mess. Um, it says clean area to be primed with mineral spirits to remove all oil, oil, grease, wax, or dirt thoroughly, or dry thoroughly, lightly sand the surface with 400, 400 from a 400 wet or dry sandpaper. Keep sandpaper wet by soaking in water while the sanding. Wipe the sanded surface clean when finished. Bake can vigorously for one minute after mixing bowl begins to rattle. 
que tú le tengo, vamos a jugar, Professor Heathen, I two free thin coats. Now allow each coat to dry for two minutes before applying the next coat. Let's see. Now I'm somewhere here, it tells you. Rust oleum, self acting primer, this pair is bare metal, aluminum, and fiberglass surfaces promote maximum adhesion and smoothness of the top coat. This product is formulated to stop rust and is an essential step to achieve a professionally finished look. Okay, so this is the stuff that you use on aluminum, and etching means that it must have some sort of, uh, I don't know, acid in it or something like that that uh, helps it to, uh, uh, I don't know, somehow it must, it must have, uh, well, if you've ever seen etch glass, you know what uh, etching does. So it basically it creates some sort of a, uh, I don't know, like, Pits or something, in, you know, micro pits or something in the metal, or to help the uh, adhesion of the paint to the metal. Uh, so uh, that's where you have to put your need to paint with uh, aluminum surfaces. Now I've also got a special paint that's going to be the top coat for that, and I'll let you wait. I'll wait and let you see what that's going to be. Um, got. There's going to be, well, aside from the black on the smoker, there's going to be three colors on the, on the totality of this um, the trailer, branding, and then the blue. It's going to be three different colors and three different colors for the trailer. Um, obviously, the smoker is going to be like this traditional for barbecue and grill. And, you know, so, and that's also the, about the only, you can get silver, but for the most part, black is traditional uh, that you can get in the ultra high heat paint. And so it's gonna stay black. And I think I have succeeded. I told you a, a few videos ago that I was trying to uh, maintain to where I can remove this uh, framing and the canopy from the trailer when need be to get in there and paint the smoker occasionally because I'm sure it's going to take some uh, upkeep occasionally. So that's where we're going. So I'm going to let this dry for a little bit longer, drink this, and maybe by the time I'm done with this, then I'll be ready to paint with the first coat. Well guys, just a little bit ago, uh, and I was sitting there drinking that beer, um, acting like it was going to rain. So I had to put everything away. In, including the steel, anyway, or steel, the aluminum. I took it inside, but I just walked it. I didn't want to rain on. And uh, so, anyway, I broke it all back out, including the camera and everything. And I'm getting ready to go ahead. Yeah. I don't know how well you can see this, guys, but uh, one hand did only about two thirds of this sheet. So, at any rate, that uh, means that I'm only gonna, I'm gonna have to buy a couple more cans of this primer. Okay, so there's the first coat on there. Um, it looks kind of ugly right now, but it's still dry and everything. So I need to let this one dry for well, at least an hour. And I'll drag another one out here. I'm gonna have to buy more of that primer because that, like I said, that probably was uh, about one and a third cans. And I got uh, another one half this size and uh, another smaller piece that I'm gonna have to paint. Um, I haven't decided, I'm still debating, I don't think I'm gonna paint the, the, root, the actual root. I think I'm gonna leave that natural aluminum. Uh, but the, but the uh, three sides around it, I am going to paint. I think I want to leave the, the top reflected sober because any color except white is going to draw more heat and in the summertime you don't want to be drawing heat. Okay guys, so the other day I went ahead and I painted this with the uh, rust reformer and it looks pretty good. And so here in just a little bit I'm going to start painting on the top coat that will not be black like it, it turned out real good. 
I had, a little, I had a rain on it since I put the rust reformer on and uh, I'm pretty happy with the way it looks right now. So let me get this put on the tripod and we'll see about getting this thing uh, at least partially painted with the uh, top coat here. I will tell you I was, I was, I've been totally stunned on how much paint this frame took. Uh, let's see, we're looking at about eight cans of paint here. And that really, really, really shocked me. It's looking pretty good. So let me get set up and we'll go at it. I don't mind telling you that I was really stunned how much that paint that took. So I found here some uh, Rust-Oleum enamel. I get 325%. So I'm hoping, hoping that maybe it won't take uh, eight cans in order to uh, paint the rest of this frame in here. But we'll see. I've got it laid over. And I went over it with a damp cloth because on this driveway, after the rain, kind of splashes up some of the dirt and stuff. So I need to do it it off just a little bit. Felt like doing the bottom first was the most important as much as I can on, on one side at a time. Okay guys, well, if I bought one more can of white paint, I've been feeling a whole lot smarter right now. You can see up here along the top, and some of these uh, cross pieces here need a little more paint, but uh, there across the top, um, there you go, a little bit of that left. He's hit again right here at the end of the, at the end of that. So got a little bit left down here, but down there is where I'm gonna, well, the dog ears don't go on this. They go on this frame over there. Um, but it needs painted too. And it's gonna be white as well. So at any rate, um, here we are. For now, it's not looking bad. But like I say, if I bought one more can of white paint, I've been feeling a whole lot smarter. So I burned up four whole cans of one third extra. So I guess that would have been, uh, all together, it would have been more like uh, four and a third can, supposedly. And it's almost done. So it has not taken as much of the white as it did with the uh, rust reformer. So there's this, and uh, so tomorrow I'll be back on painting something else. I may finish this off tomorrow, we'll see. Um, but I got some other things to paint too. Actually, as soon as this is done, the next project is to paint the red over on the trailer. Um, you know, I've shot a bunch of primer and stuff on it. Um, and so it's gonna get repainted 
all red again, uh, including the, uh, the work stand over there. Uh, the trailer's first, the work stand is second. Uh, kind of working on a budget right now. And I just gotta do what I can do for the time being. Okay guys, so there it is, finished. At least the uh, main part of the framing is finished. I got just a couple little places, I'm gonna tip it over backwards, but I wanted to uh, show you this before I did that. While it's all set up, it's all, all, all painted and uh, ready to go. That's the finished product as far as painting and everything. Uh, next thing is to put the skin on these two panels here. The entire bottom across the back and then the two panels over here on the end. Over here I've still got to paint this uh, this is the overhang that I haven't gotten done yet, but something I wanted to show you in regards to taking this rust off, like right here, that I found works the best. This is a just a, uh, a stainless steel sink scrubby. And I think it just works so much better and faster than one of your uh, wire brushes on on the uh, on the uh, angle grinder it's not funny I can do this whole thing here in probably about half an hour with this uh, old stainless steel sink scrub scrubby now this one scrubby did this whole thing over here and so you know it's kind of beat up <laughs> um, it didn't look anything like that one was brand new, but I just went to the uh, Dollar General store, picked up, uh, I think, two of them for maybe three bucks, something like that. I forget, um, but they're real cheap, and uh, you can buy them there, and I found out it works just as good. Now, you want to kind of go over it with a cloth or something to get any of the loose rust that might be left behind before you go to painting on it. But, you see how fast I just did two sides of that and works great. But it's coming together pretty quick now. The painting's going much faster than I thought it would, although it's using way more paint than I thought it would. In fact, I'll just take you over here and I'll show you what's down here. That's a whole bunch of paint cans, which translates into money. Alrighty, so I'm going to stop for now, and I'll get back with you um, probably tomorrow. i got to go inside and take a final on the uh, uh, customer service class I'm taking. I already know I'm getting my degree. Uh, I passed the uh, managerial accounting class that I was having trouble with. i got to be with it, though, so uh, I'm happy. But i got to get... i got to take care of my responsibilities. I got a whole lot of money wrapped up into that degree. I can't let things go. So I will be back with you. All right guys, before I get started here, what I gotta do, I gotta get this panel, um, the framing for the overhang, put back over here on the, uh, on the actual uh, frame, you know, the frame for the, around the smoker. And the reason why I gotta do that is to uh, get those dog ears welded on this thing, but I need to have it up there on it so I can see exactly where I need to mount them. So that's what I'm up to this morning. And uh, once again, I'm going to say uh, don't laugh at me because uh, uh, I'm only one person and this thing's kind of awkward by yourself. Last time I got really lucky. Let's see if I saw it again. I'll try putting one of these pins in here again. It worked out real well last time to do that.
Okay, so the first thing I gotta do is get this steel cleaned up. Uh, it's been sitting around a little while. In the weather. First thing I need is two two-inch pieces. Okay, so I got a, co a piece of this uh, uh, quarter-inch, well, inch and a half, I think it is. And I need. Well, first of all, I need to bust the rust off of it real quick. There you go, you can see what I was up to. Okay, so I got both of those walls on. Let me tell you. I keep a can of this uh, burn relief spray in my truck for situations like I just did. And believe it or not, I just spray that on my fingers. And just as soon as it hit my fingers, I could feel the pain leaving my fingertip. So um, I grabbed a hold of that steel, not too, uh, apparently not far enough away from where I just welded on it. And it hit, let me know real quick. Get myself a mark. I'll cut it. Now I've got to knock the slag off the welds that I just made over here.
All right. All right. <laughs> Okay guys, so these are the final welds on this project. And uh, so what I'm gonna do now is drill a hole well, for a 5 16 inch drill bit and drill a hole right through here. So I can put another one of those uh, pins in there for travel purposes. Same over here, not too bad a weld. So those are the final welds. I just got to get my, like I said, a, a 5 16 inch drill bit to make room for those quarter inch pins that are going to go through there. So that's what I'm up to. Uh, I got to put some tools away. I got to be somewhere at 2 o'clock. So I'll be back with you. Okay guys, so I told you the other day I went and bought some of these stainless steel scrubbies. And they're made by Scotchbrite. And uh, so I went to the dollar store just a minute ago because I lost the other one that I was using. I have no clue where I put it. So they, it costs a whole dollar thirty-five for a couple of these. And so uh, I highly recommend it. If you're just scratching off surface rust, these work just fine. There you go, that's what they look like when they're brand new out of the package. A little different from the other day, the one I showed you. I guarantee you cannot do that that fast with a angle grind. Go back, wipe off the loose rust so it doesn't knock off. I'm just going to go around and start hitting it with this rust reformer. that dry for about 10 minutes or 15 minutes something like that and I'm gonna come over and flip it over I can't believe how fast that dries much faster than that white enamel all right so we got it flipped over And then we'll hit uh, the first part of the white. And in case you can't tell, that dude's empty. They're all but empty. We'll move this out into the yard. Stand it up on end. I'll be right back. I'll show you what I got going on with it. So there you go. We got us all set up here. And uh, beginning to start painting some white on it. Okay guys, so that's pretty well got this uh, hit. The corners are where it's really easy to screw up a mess. 
So, I'm gonna give this some dry time, however long it takes. Who knows, it might not be till tomorrow afternoon. So I'm gonna give it some dry time and uh, flip it over so I can get that bottom, what is now the bottom rail. It's actually the hinge side that goes up against the, the main cage up there. So I'm gonna give that some dry time come back and check on it a little bit. I've still got a few hours of daylight yet. I might be able to get it yet tonight. We'll see. Right, so that is too tacky. I'm not going to try to turn it over tonight. Looks like I'm gonna leave that sit all night. So I'm gonna move over here to something different on the big cage there. I can get my camera set right. There we go. And we'll see what we can see what we can get for you here. Now what I got here are these screws called, come on focus, there we go, check screws. And these are, they're called lath screws. And lath is for like uh, plaster work. However, they have a, I can get up in here in a picture. Come on focus for me. So at any rate, they, they have a, uh, let's see if I can back this out, there we go. They have a self-drilling tip on there, with like a drill bit tip. Then they have these really wide heads on them to help hold that, it'll work to help hold that uh, aluminum in place. So that's what I'm using to screw this aluminum down with.
Okay, I'm gonna take you up here and show you what's going on with it. Okay, so there are my two outer sides of it. On the on the top there. Like I said, I can't close off the middle. So I get it back up on top of the trailer. And I can measure and cut for the uh, stack to go through. Um, I really don't want to screw that up. So, let me show you these. There are these uh, tech screws in here. Those things are big and fat on the top. Almost like roofing nails. That's the reason why I got them. Because that'll help keep air from getting up underneath it and blowing the, the, the top of it off. And the, uh, the piece that goes here in the center will actually overlap both of these outer ones and I had that intended that way. Um, that was the plan. So this is it for the night. I'm going to shut it down and uh, tomorrow, what's tomorrow? Tomorrow we will get this turned over and paint that last little bit on the uh, the bottom, what is the bottom right now, and get that taken care of. And if it gets dried in time, which I kind of doubt, uh, but if it does, then I'll go ahead and mount the aluminum on that as well and have that done, totally done. Now this uh, up here and the aluminum that goes over here, I'm just gonna leave that bare aluminum and not worry about painting because for the most part, uh, nobody's going to see much of it anyhow, so it's not going to hurt a thing. And aluminum, aluminum will take the weather where the steel won't. So, that's it for tonight. I'll be with you tomorrow. Okay guys, so I got this uh, piece of aluminum laid up over the overhang here. And what I'm doing right this second is taking a chalk line, like you normally use in wood construction, And I'm marking the centers of my cross pieces on the framing. That's going to be real important here in a minute. I'm going to go and start putting screws in. Now it seems the metal shop, when they went to cut this piece of aluminum, seems like maybe they gave me an extra quarter inch on the length on this thing. And so, I'm trying to kind of split the difference on here. Okay, so I want to start in the middle of each one of these lines. tell you what, that sun is reflecting back up off that thing. It's a bright sunny, su sunny summer day. It is hot coming up off of there. Now you'll notice I started in the middle. I'm going to work my way this, out this way and out that way. That way if there's any kind of a, a bow in it, it'll help work it out as I move out, work outward from it. <laughs> not quite as bad leaning over from this side because uh, the sun is more to my south which is off to my right right now and it's kind of hitting here and bouncing this direction and believe me it makes a difference when you're standing on standing over
Now you might wonder why I'm using so many screws and putting these so tight together. That's because I guarantee you this is going to be a one-time build. I'm not going to do another one of these. This is my own personal smoker. And uh, I have no intention of building another one of these. I do have a buddy over at uh, Steel Drum Smokers. Look him up on YouTube here. Uh, he posted a picture on uh, Instagram the other day. And I, uh, he did give me an idea for another trailer build, but it will not be anything like this trailer build. Battery's starting to run low. I'm hoping I can make it through six more holes. Okay, guys, we made it. So, there it is. That looks uh, pretty professional, if you ask me. Let me take it and show you. There you go. Now, then, the reason why I wanted these screws like this, another reason, I wanted the, the big wide head, but I wanted them smooth. So in case, you know, if you rub up against them or something, then, uh, you know, you're just not going to be hurting yourself every time you got up against it. Now I went four inches on center here, but I went six inches over here. And that's simply because I think that the, the four inch is a little bit overkill. But at the same time, this piece and the roof pieces over there are not going to get as much blockage uh, of the wind from the truck itself when it's being pulled. Um, so I want to make sure that I had some good uh, tie down on this so that air can't get up underneath it and try to rip it off. You know, it is uh, not terribly uh, thick aluminum. For one thing, aluminum is expensive. <coughs> and, you know, it's, trust me, it's thicker than a pop or a beer can, but at the same time, it is aluminum. And so, I want to make sure that I got it good and tacked down. Now the bottom half of the frame over there where I'm going to get going next, not, not next next, I got my next project after the, now that this is done is going to be start to prep the trailer itself, the trailer itself for painting. Um, as I told you before, I'm going to leave the uh, stand to last and uh, 
but the trailer itself and the base of the smoker there still got some rust on it that needs to be taken care of so the trailer and the bot the base of the smoker are next on my agenda um, once that's done then I can come back and put this on and I'll put the skin on the bottom and on the top up there um, but I don't want to do it until it's on the trailer um, so that's how it's gonna go all right so I'm gonna stop for the time being I mean not not it's probably not the end of this video but I'm stopping for the time being till I can get uh, I'm gonna try to see if I can manhandle this thing up on there again although it's gonna be a whole lot harder because I can't wrap my hands around those bars that I used to to uh, get it up onto the up onto the big frame over here so let me see if I can get that handled <laughs> All right guys, I got the trailer all stripped down, ready for final painting. Got the stand off the side, tires off, got the stand sitting over here. Got it all up on jack stands. So, it's ready for cleaning and painting. All right guys, well, I got the red part of it painted today. I think it looks pretty good. Now, I even climbed up underneath the trailer and painted it from the bottom up. Um, and I think it looks all right. Now I got some touch up paint that I gotta do with the black. I got plenty of black in there to work with. Uh, as you can see right there where I connected to the to the frame here on the for the smoker and also over here on the firebox you can see a little overspray here as well but overall and just a little bit right there that's no no problem I can take care of all this uh, main thing was to get this trailer done and uh, I'm pretty happy the way it looks now then I still got a whole lot of painting to do right here and this is a very tedious thing to paint for one thing you waste a whole lot of paint trying to spray this thing uh, spraying through the through the uh, expanded metal there so it's going to take several cans of uh, red paint to go with this over, or to go over this I did however get the uh, end tables for the stand painted so there we go it's coming along I haven't done anything with the uh, main part of the of the uh, cover there yet uh, it's it's on standby <laughs> until I uh, get the trailer back to where I can put the tires and everything back on it but I want to like I said I still got the black to do which is going to be the main portion of the black that he's done is just the uh, the framing here of course got some rust on it from where it sat on the ground last winter but I'll be able to knock that off pretty quick and easy and I'm gonna come along and I'm gonna I think I'm gonna just brush paint this instead of spray paint it that way I can be a whole lot more accurate and not over spray onto the red kind of bat myself back and forth all the time doing the same thing so I just wanted to catch you up on where I'm at with it and so there we are stick with me we got some more to do yet okay folks well this is going to be the end of this video uh, if I go too far with it then I'm going to kind of ruin the big reveal video which is going to be the next one because uh, the smoker is actually and the and the uh, trailer are actually done right now, and it's sitting directly behind the camera at the moment, and uh, so um, I don't want to take it too far, and uh, I've squeeze I've already squeezed uh, five hours worth of video time 
into this video that's uh, cut down now to just short of an hour which is already pretty long so I don't want to uh, I don't want to try to squeeze more on this it's already longer than many of you maybe want to watch so uh, that's not going to happen on this video so uh, let's call it a day on this on this uh, the you know the the great smoker build is coming to an end that doesn't necessarily mean that my video channel will be ending um, I got some other ideas including uh, turning it into a cooking channel um, so that may happen so for now let's uh, call it a day on this and uh, I greatly appreciate you folks watching and I also want to say stay tuned because there is more to come.